speed of modern warfare is constantly increasing. Today, gigantic maneuvers involving whole armies are easily and quickly carried out almost daily. These feats would not be possible if it were not for the efficiency of the communication systems in use today. But communications were not always this good. Take a look at some of the early radio equipment used by our armies. This is the old Hammond receiver and transmitter used in World War I. This two-man generator used at that time required a lot of muscle for proper operation. Here are some of the tubes used in those days. Compare them with the modern tubes doing the same job today. The first infantry pack set was adopted by our army back in 1924. These recently captured German radios are a far cry from the early American models we've just seen, and a lot better. This Jap model is also compact and well-engineered and does an excellent job. But why shouldn't it? Almost every phase of it, even down to the labels on the tubes, was copied from our equipment. Now let's take a look at what our own radio engineers have been doing. They've turned out a set that tops them all the SCR-694. It's a compact, ruggedly built, two-way, amplitude-modulated radio telephone and radio telegraph unit. It's for communication between moving vehicles, as well as those that are stationary. And is also designed for fixed station operation, as well as portable use in the field. All the equipment weighs about 108 pounds and can be handled by two men in a pinch. The whole set is thoroughly waterproof and fungi-proof. Hey, what are you doing? Oh, I forgot. The transmitter and receiver are housed in a case that actually floats. Now, let's get that receiver and transmitter back in place. We can now learn a little more about the set. It's as dry as a bone. Frequency range of the SCR-694 is from 3,800 to 6,500 kilocycles. It transmits and receives voice modulated signals, MCW or modulated continuous waves, and CW or continuous wave signals. A turn of the switch is all that's necessary. The power output range is from 8 and 1 half watts to 25 watts on CW, and from less than 1 watt to 7 watts on phone, depending on the position of the low, medium, high switch. And whether the hand generator or vibrator power supply is used. Here it's the generator because this is a field installation. The vibrator power supply is used for vehicular operation. Distance range of the SCR-694 is 15 miles on voice and 30 miles on CW between moving vehicles, increasing to much greater distances between fixed stations using the special horizontal antenna which goes with the set. Let's take a closer look at the SCR-694 and its component parts. Four canvas bags carry the set and all its equipment. As you recall, they weigh about 108 pounds and in a pinch can be handled by two men. These bags are sturdily made to withstand rugged field use. The antenna equipment roll takes care of the mast sections for the whip antenna, the metal stakes for securing antenna guy ropes, generator legs and seat, cranks for the generator, the insulator that is used in the field for the vertical antenna, and the power cable used for connecting the generator and the set.
A second bag carries the operating accessories, which include the following. The headset, key, lip and hand mic, horizontal antenna, counterpoise, and the guy ropes. Another bag carries the generator, and the remaining one, the set itself. For field installations, the set is operated within the carrying bag. All you have to do is take off the set cover and make proper connections. That completes the equipment as it is used in the field. For vehicular installations, additional items are supplied, such as a special mast base, mast bracket, mounting for the set, and of course the special waterproof heavy-duty vibrator power supply. In these installations, the panel cover is used as a shock mount. This allows the set to be installed or removed simply by fastening or unfastening the straps. Now let's examine the set itself more closely. Well-designed panel guards protect the controls and front panels of the transmitter and receiver when the cover is removed. This prevents damage to the controls in case the set is tipped over or bumped. The guards are so placed that they won't interfere with the operation of any of the controls. Transmitter or receiver guard may be easily removed by loosening four screws. To make the set waterproof, both the receiver and transmitter units are mounted in their case on neoprene gaskets. and are held there by eight snap fasteners. Loosening four of the fasteners allows either the transmitter or receiver to be instantly removed from the case. This makes it easy to replace tubes and parts quickly. When a unit is removed, antenna, relay, side tone, power and ground connections between units are broken automatically. All controls are packed to prevent the entrance of moisture. The heavy waterproof power cable is provided with specially designed connectors. Receptacles are also of improved design. The construction of the power connectors and receptacles reduce the chance of insulation breakdown between contacts and are quite an improvement over the old type. The transmitter uses a four-tube circuit of exceptional stability. A three-position switch selects master oscillator frequency control or either of two crystal-controlled channels. Crystals are quickly changed by loosening one screw on the front panel, and crystal frequencies may be recorded on a chart attached to the crystal cover. A calibration chart for MO control is attached to the front of the transmitter. A 200 kilocycle crystal in the receiver enables the operator to check and correct the transmitter frequency when MO control is used. The variable tuning capacitor assembly is precision built and is comparable in accuracy to the capacitor used in the famous SCR211 frequency meter set. A single dial sets the transmitter frequency and a special spring lock prevents the dial from being accidentally knocked or jarred off frequency. When necessary, the dial lamp may be lighted by pressing a push button. All switches are made without stops and can be rotated 360 degrees. This prevents damaging the switch by forcing it against a stop. A neon tuning indicator is used to show resonance in the antenna circuit. 
The brilliance of the indicator is regulated by means of an adjustable Polaroid window. This enables the operator, for the sake of security, to reduce the amount of light visible during night operations. Tuning of the antenna circuit is accomplished by a movable iron core, which varies the inductance of the antenna tuning coil. One revolution of the antenna tuning control completely tunes from minimum to maximum value. Now let's take a look at the receiver. To get it out of the case, the four clamps are loosened. The tubes of the receiver are protected by a one-piece metal shield, easily removed by releasing two spring clips. The receiver circuit is a six-tube superheterodyne using miniature tubes. A three-position sensitivity control adjustable to high, medium, or low can be varied to suit the incoming signal. Using the high position of the sensitivity control, phone or CW signals of less than 5 microvolts can be satisfactorily received. Using reduced sensitivity prevents blocking and eliminates weaker interfering signals. A special spring lock on the tuning control holds the dial in its tuned position when the set is subject to excessive jarring. A tapped output transformer accommodates high or low impedance phones. It incorporates a screwdriver operated switch that permits selection of the desired output impedance. The receiver can be operated from a battery carried in the same bag as the set. This battery will give about 20 hours of continuous service. The receiver can also be operated from the hand generator during field use. When the set is installed in a vehicle, the receiver is operated from the vibrator power supply. As in the case of the transmitter, a push button operated dial light is provided. A special power cable permits operating the receiver out of the case for purposes of alignment, testing, or repairing. This cable also carries the ground and antenna connections to the receiver. The hand generator gives further evidence of the improved constructional features of the SCR694. Like the rest of the set, the generator unit is completely waterproof and fungi-proof, the cover being sealed tight by a neoprene gasket and held securely by six snap fasteners. Waterproof caps held tight by thumb screws keep water out of the crank holes. The power receptacle is also covered by a waterproof cap. The generator incorporates a special quiet chain and gear drive, the entire unit being rubber mounted to reduce driving shock and noise. Power is transferred from the cranks to the gears by a rubber transfer section. The generator armature rotates at approximately 3600 RPM when the cranks are turned at 60 RPM. The generator delivers both low and high voltage and incorporates a special voltage regulator and filter network. The vibrator power supply is sturdily built to take it and is provided with a special rubber shock mount. Like the rest of the set, it is also waterproof and fungi-proof. A switch allows the unit to be operated on six 
12 or 24 volt vehicle batteries. Switch position may be read through a window in the case. Other features of the vibrator power supply include an overload circuit breaker that works on 6, 12 or 24 volts and an improved constant voltage type filament transformer which eliminates erratic operation caused by fluctuating transmitter filament voltage and thus aids in prolonging the life of the tubes. A special heavy duty portion of the vibrator power unit supplies operating voltages for the transmitter and receiver. The heavy duty vibrator contains five separate sets of contacts, one set for each of five different transformers. This equalizes the power carried by the contacts and thus reduces arcing and gives better voltage regulation and longer life. A low drain portion of the vibrator power unit supplies receiver voltages when the transmitter operating switch is in the standby position. This unit draws only about one quarter as much power as the heavy duty unit and is used for long periods of listening. Spare tubes and spare vibrators are carried inside the vibrator unit. Ready access to parts and the simplicity of sub-assemblies make maintenance easy. Vertical whip antenna sections are made of tubular copper-plated steel, providing greatest conductivity consistent with strength and flexibility of material. Sections are threaded and tapped to secure a positive contact without the use of coupling nuts and flanges. For ground field use, a non-flexible Bakelite insulator is provided to accommodate the vertical whip antenna. Five antenna sections are used in both field and vehicular installations. The mast base for vehicular installations is a combination antenna insulator of low capacity and a flexible mounting for the antenna which allows mast sections to be bent almost horizontal without damage. A special feature is the slow recovery after hitting an obstacle. This reduces the shock to the antenna caused by striking a number of obstacles in succession. The horizontal antenna has six insulated jumper sections and a calibrating chart is attached to it which shows how many links to connect for any operating frequency. It's normally erected from 5 to 30 feet high, but may work as low as 3 feet, although such practice is not recommended. Using the horizontal antenna permits transmission and reception over greater distances. It is recommended for permanent and semi-permanent installations. That's the story of radio set SCR694, the set that tops them all. A radio that is compact. It can be carried by two men if necessary. Waterproof. The set itself will even float. Ruggedly constructed, easy to operate, and efficient under all conditions. Here's a set which in its own way is a commando among radios. Rugged, efficient, and with plenty of wallop that will help you get that message through.